All right, monsters. Time for an update on the Blackbird. Uh, I've had the guitar for I don't know two weeks, two and a half weeks, three weeks now, um, and it's the only guitar I've been playing for the last three weeks. Uh, I took it in the studio to start tracking our, our new album with American Jet Set, and um, I couldn't be more pleased. I've, I've got it dialed in exactly where I want it. I've got the trim keem figured out. Uh, I've got the pickups figured out. I, I you know the switching. I, I kind of know where all the tones are now. Um, and it's awesome. So what I wanted to do was go through and do uh, an in-depth tech review. This is not a playthrough. If you want to see that, check out the, the first video. Listen for the new record because this thing will be on it. So let's start with what I think is the most important piece of a guitar, and that's the neck. Um, so the, the neck, this is a she -oak, uh, a she -oak fretboard, which is uh, an Australian wood, and then Australian... Uh, mountain ash. It's it's maple-ish. Um, it's bright. It's it's really smooth, but it but it feels very woody. So you can see it's an unfinished neck on the back. Um, it just it feels like a, a a baseball bat. It's a very big neck. Uh, it's a 22 fret. The frets uh, I I think are medium tall. Um, so they're tall. Medium means they're they're not wide like a jumbo, but they are taller, which which helps with intonation and helps with bending. Uh, it's a modern radius. It's a 12-inch radius. I believe this is a bone nut, um, and it just sounds great. It plays great. Uh, a big neck. I, I have big meaty claws. Big meaty claws. And uh, I like a big neck. It's a C profile, all the way down. It doesn't change. It's not a compound radius or anything like that. But it's just a straight C profile. Really, really comfortable. Aside from the new Ultra series, where it's got this that cool uh, heel contour, um, really comfortable. Most tellies, it's 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 kind of beefy, even with big hands to get to get in here. People with little hands, it's real tough. But for me, uh, it actually feels it's the most comfortable standard neck joint guitar that I have. So it's got three on the side headstock here. Um, they are uh, Gato. Um, I don't know if that's how you say it. G O T O H. Uh, locking tuners, those are the kind of tuners I use on all my guitar. The thumb screw on the back here, uh, and what that allows you to do is basically just string the guitar through, pull it, lock it, cut it, and then tune it up, which takes a lot of slack um, that goes around the post out of the way, and, and that's just a, a dynamic piece of the guitar you remove, keeps it in tune better. Uh, takes about five minutes to change strings with locking tuners, vice 10, 15, if you gotta wind it. Um, moving on, let's see, I, I put Dunlop, um, what are they, the Dunlop strap locks, little button on them. They're, I use them on all the guitars. I've never dropped a guitar. Going down to pickups, this is a Paul Gilbert 13 mini humbucker from DiMarzio. Um, probably my new favorite neck pickup. Um, mini humbuckers are kind of cool because they've got two coils. They're, they're a humbucker. They've got two sets of coils, so they don't hum. Kona's helping me out. Um, one of the coils is posts, the other one is a rail on the inside. They're, they're real close together, so it's a, it's, a, it's a more compact magnetic field. Sort of takes the tonality away from being a humbucker and more towards a single coil. Don't get me wrong, it's not a single coil. It's a cool cross between them. So it, it gets a little spanky like a, a Tele neck pickup, but it's really smooth. Um, it's, it's not overbearing, it's not shiny like, like a strap pickup. Um, you roll off the tone a little bit, does some, some cool jazz tones, um, put it all up, put a little treble again, pluck on it, gives some nice plucky Telecaster tones. Moving back to the DiMarzio Chopper T. Um, this is a railed humbucker with two coils. Uh, they're basically side by side, very, very small profile. It's, it's, it's essentially a Telecaster thin profile pickup. It just sounds big and meaty. Not not big and meaty like like a humbucker, like you know, like a PAF or something like that, but different. Um, it, it still has got some twang to it. It's it still can pluck, but it's not as harsh in my opinion as a as a standard tele pickup. Um, the cool thing about it is because it's slanted like that, you you move the magnetic field more towards uh, the nut on the lower strings and back towards the bridge on the higher strings. So what that does, a, a string makes sound long, longitudinally, but it vibrates less when you get to the locking points, which is the nut and, and the bridge. Well, if you move this out, the string vibrates a little bit more. It, it basically gets a little looser in the low end. 
uh, as you as you bring it back, it's a little tighter in the high end. So as the tele pickup is slanted, you you get a little bit tighter highs, a little bit looser lows. To me, uh, standard humbuckers in the bridge, um, unless you're going for like a really metally tone, um, they they're a little too tight in the low end for me, and, and they're not quite as loose. And and I really like that shift. So pr pretty sweet. It's a great pickup. Controls. So this guy is a four position selector switch. Um, uh, and, and the way that's different from a modern tell or any tell really is modern, uh, most tells are three, um, which position one, I'll call it, is your bridge pickup. Position two in the middle um, is both pickups in parallel, meaning they're both hitting your output jack at the same time. So they go through the volume, they both hit the switch at the same time, and they and they go to the output jack at the same time. So the tones are mashed together independently. Um, they hit each other at the same time, they go out at the same time. They That that interference between those two signals hits your amp at the same time and, and gives you a little bit of destructive interference, which takes the volume down a little bit, opens up the, the, the low end or and, and, the, and the highs and really gives it sort of that chimey sound. Position three is, is neck only, so you get nothing in the bridge. That's a standard tele setup. So with a four position, you get similar. Um, in general, you'll see four positions wired like this. Number one is bridge. Number two is bridge and neck in parallel, just like the, the two position on a tele. Number three is the neck position alone. And number four is back to your bridge and your neck position in series, meaning the pickups hit each other sequentially. So it's bridge and then it hits uh, the, the neck. So the bridge pickup signal is enhanced by the neck pickup. They basically stack them together. Instead of hitting at the same time, you stack them together, you get additive interference or additive uh, effect on that Fourier processing. It's science. On this guitar, first guitar I've ever seen this happen, and, and I, asked me, I actually sent an email to DiMarzio on how to do this because I thought it was a really good idea long before I even talked to Dave. Um, so that's some synergy right there, Dave. Um, he's got it wired where number one is still bridge, number two is still bridge and neck in parallel, number three now becomes bridge, neck in series. So both your middle positions are in your middle position of your switch. Ding. And then four, all the way forward, is your neck pickup. Makes total sense. You don't have to think about it. Um, dig it. This is just a, a high quality CTS volume pot, 250K. High quality CTS tone pot, 250K. Uh, differences on the inside here, there's a treble bleed. Now what a treble bleed does is normally as you turn down the volume, you're increasing the resistance of the output of your guitar to your jack that resistance increases unequally. It increases faster for your high end, so your high end is attenuated quicker than your low end as you turn down. Eventually they both get to zero and you have no output. So what a treble bleed does is it puts a, a path of the volume pot on the high end frequencies to your output jack, which means as you roll down, it sort of flattens that curve for the volume pot and lowers it all at the same time. What that means is your tone doesn't change as you turn down. As you turn the guitar down, your, your volume just goes down, not your tone. And that's great. Um, for me especially, I only play single channel amps. Um, I, I don't have a clean channel, I don't have a dirty channel, I just have gain. Um, I, and then I have uh, a gain stage I click on for more gain. So my, my amp is always dirty. Dirty. The way to get around that is you just turn the volume down decrease the output, which it's the preamp in your in your amp, you get a clean tone. Um, so I don't have to hit any switches with my foot, I just turn the volume down and get a clean tone. Critical if you play like that to have a treble bleed, because if you turn the volume down without it, your tone gets muddy, you get a, a muddy clean sound. It doesn't sound very good. So that's cool. Um, this jack uh, right there, it's cool. Uh, it's a little different than a, than a normal telly. It's got a jack plate. The tellies have this this hole cut out, and I'll, I'll put a picture up of my telly, um, which makes changing your, your jack out a pain. This is so much better, my gosh. In order to get this jacket, you just undo these four little screws, and you pull it out, you got the whole jack. On a telly, you gotta route the thing, you gotta 
it also makes it impossible to use a 90 degree angle uh, connector on a telly. I don't use them anyway because I, I feel like that's another uh, point of failure, but if you wanted to, you could do it on this guitar. So one, the jack plate is different. Great. This is how you need to do a jack plate on a modern guitar. The other cool thing about this, this jack is it's a two point of contact jack. So uh, I think I got a picture of it, but there's, there's two points of contact on the tip of your cable, which is the, the hot signal, and two points of contact on the barrel of your jack, which is the ground. Why that's important. Um, it doesn't change your tone. Um, at least I don't think it does. Uh, it, it just makes sure you always have a solid contact. When you're jumping around on stage, if you, if you have a one point of contact and you jiggle your cable a little bit, you'll get cutouts. On a two point of contact jack, you cannot do that. You, you will never get any bumps in the signal. It's a solid connection. Uh, it doesn't come out. It makes it a little tighter in there. It's great. I will use two point of contact jacks on every single guitar I own. Um, I prefer pure tones. I think that's what's in here. Um, but any anyone will do. And it, it's just a, a cool little improvement that makes life way easier. Hold on, I gotta let the cat out. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the body. So if you look here, there's a really cool contour here. Um, really pronounced, but, but really classy. I will tell you the most comfortable body carve I've ever felt on a T-style guitar. Uh, really, really cool. I, I, I really dig it, but it's, it's a very deep contour. If you can see the difference there, that's probably about an inch that comes off from the body, maybe a little bit less, but that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, the body is, is not bound. It's just a solid piece of wood, but it's all really rounded and, and, and smooth. There's no uh, sharp angles to, to bang yourself up on. In addition, it's got this really smooth body carve on the back here, this belly carve. Makes it totally comfortable. I play guitar pretty high. Um, I'm one of those proggy guys, I guess, but I, I like my guitar up a little bit. Uh, the only other thing we've been talking about with Dave is is a change to this prototype, is, is adding um, a heel carve. So a heel contour going into a small contour on this lower horn right here. So something like this, he's gonna, he's gonna work it. I think I may send this guitar back as a, as a test, um, not because I don't love it, but just he wants to test it out. And so, he, you know, he wants to do that carve, see what I think. So we'll probably do that um, sometime in the new year when, when we get done recording uh, the next record with the band. Um, reason for that, I have big meaty claws. What did you say, punk? Big meaty claws! Getting in here quick, um, this is where I hit my hand. Um, if, if you have big hands, a contour on the horn of a T-style guitar is very helpful. If you have small hands, a contour on the heel is very helpful. So small hands need a smaller heel, big hands need a contour on the horn. Um, do them both and you get best of both worlds no matter who you sell the guitar to. You, you have a, a very nice ergonomical feel. So the last thing let's talk about here is this guy, the Trem King. So I'll throw some photos up while I'm doing this. So what the Trem King is, is something totally new. I guess they've been around for like 10 years now, and, and I never heard of them, which is crazy. A little bit of background, I've played Floyd Roses, I've played Strats, and, and um, I got some, some whammy skills, I guess. You know, like, nunchuck skills, bow hunting skills, computer hacking skills. But I intentionally walked away from them because I felt like I was using it too much, I was relying on it, instead of relying on tone and relying on feel and finesse and fretboard fluency. And so I walked away from Trem guitars for, for a long time. I still have them, I still got a Floyd guitar, and, and they're great, they have their uses, but you know, I was, sort of, I was sort of set that I would only do fixed bridge guitars. So Dave mentioned he had this, and I was like, eh, I don't know, never really heard of it, I don't know if I'm interested, but, but I researched and I was like, well, pretty cool. Here's why. Um, this whole bridge is fixed. There's um, four or five, there's five bolts holding this thing to the guitar. It ain't moving. These saddles are fixed to the bridge, so the saddles don't move. If you look in there, there's little roller bearings in every one of these saddles, which is kind of interesting. All the action happens inside. There's a rotating block. The string block that's in the back of the guitar is the thing that moves, and that's on bearings on the inside, and it's floating, so you can pull up 
or you can go down with it. Uh, but that's what, what moves and then it rotates on these, these ball bearings. There's no connector on the nut, so your intonation point never changes on the string. The distance between the nut and the bridge contact point never changes. The height of your, your bridge never changes. If I pop a string, nothing else in here moves. The only time this thing moves is when you touch the bar. It's pretty awesome. So the, the bar here just pulls right out. There's no thread on it. There's a little Allen screw in here. You just tighten it up and that's how you tighten or loosen your action on your trim bar. I like it a little bit tight. You see it doesn't spin freely because I like to be able to position it for, for moves or, or get it out of the way and have it stay out of the way. Um, on the back, to get at this thing, pretty interesting. It's just like a, you know, a standard back plate to any sort of guitar. But to get it off, I'll just take one of my guitar picks. Boom, pop that sucker out. It's in there real tight. It does not rattle, which is critical. Uh, and then and then you look back in here. Here's the string block. Um, two springs, that's all you need. Ground wire. Um, each spring is silenced with foam, so you don't get no string noise. That's pretty cool, right? That's really important for you trim users. No string noise, right? It's got this foam in there. And, and you can see that the center spring basically provides most of the tension on the guitar because it goes all the way to this back plate back here. And then you've got one more to just give it a little more oomph. Now, when you actuate the tremolo, boom, you see they stretch out and they come back. So the force that pulls the tremolo back to zero is the springs under tension. Pretty precise once you set it, actually super precise once you set it. Uh, it does not go out of tune from what I've, what I've found, I, I mean, really rarely. And I'll take it all the way down to, to a quote unquote dive bomb. It won't slack the strings, so you can't Eddie Van Halen it, but it'll go down, you know, um, I don't know, a major third probably, pretty, pretty good. But it comes right back because of this tension. Here's, here's the issue, when I, when I pull it the other way to raise the tension on the string, there's a couple things that happens. You see nothing happens to that center spring right here. It isn't doing anything. So there is no uh, return force from the center spring. It does compress this uh, bottom spring here, but that spring actually wants to compress because it's stretched a little bit. So it's pro providing relief to that. So the only force that's pulling that tremolo back into zero when you go up on it is your string tension. Um, because of that, let me put this back in here. Because of that, when you pull up on it, it tends to land sharp. Um, and, th and that's just because it's a different um, force acting on the inside of this block. It's not as precise. The strings want to go back, but, but they're happy sitting a little bit sharp. To, so if you, if you do pull up on it, you have to then dip it a little bit, change that return force back to the spring tension, let it go, and it comes right back. So if you pull a note, if you hit a harmonic and pull it and do a Steve Vai scream or a Satriani scream, <laughs> it'll do it. Uh, you just gotta go dip it a little bit to pull it back and it's good to go. Super cool. Um, it's sort of the best Strat style trim you can have, floating, kind of can do Bigsby type stuff, kind of can do Floyd stuff, but it is different. It, it doesn't do them all the same, but it adds just another tool on your guitar that doesn't take playability away, doesn't take um, pragmatism away when you're gigging and, and traveling with a guitar. It's very stable. Um, so if you, if you bend, for example, do a two string bend, it, it doesn't change the tension on any of those strings like it would with a Floyd or it. So your, your guitar stays in tune, hugely important. Love it. Now, you T-style purists out there, you may love it, you may not. I think it's a personal preference deal. Um, my feedback to Dave was, I would not put this as a standard option on this guitar. So this guitar is a bit of a prototype. Most of you T-style purists will not want this. Um, it's just not a telly, right? This this isn't a telly thing. This is a, this is a, it's not a shredder thing, but you, you would, probably see it that way. Um, cool option to have, not the standard thing to put on the guitar. So I think that's how he's going to go. I think he's going to have a fixed bridge on this thing for the standard models, and then this will be an upgrade. 
really dig it. I, I, I recommend doing the upgrade if, if you're a Trem fan and you want it on a T-Style guitar. But if you just want a Tele uh, jam, then I would just stick with a fixed bridge. Um, tonality, I think it does change the tone of the guitar. It, obviously, it's going to change the resonance of the guitar. It's going to change things a bit. Um, this guitar sounds brighter than my Tele. That is not an apples to apples comparison. Different wood, different neck, same strings, um, you know, pretty much same bridge, different neck, guitar pickup, but now the strings are going through a metal block, which is through these bearings to the wood, through this bridge to the wood. It's just different than a string through telling. Better, worse, neither. Um, just different, different sound. And that's totally cool. Um, if you want every guitar to sound the same, one, it won't happen because the wood's a little bit different. Uh, the build's a little bit different, the, the air around the guitar is a little bit different, but um, it's nice to have axes that sound a little different. They're, they're inspiring in different ways, and this one is certainly inspiring. So, um, at the end of the day, amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing guitar. Dave, is, Dave and Viv are thinking of making this their, their uh, flagship solid body electric guitar. Um, if, if you're in the market for a T-style guitar with modern refinements, um, it's boutique quality uh, from from just a, a great set of folks out in Australia. Um, there's not a lot of these out there, and uh, man, they, they just get complimented and, and, and just get looks wherever you play them, and they sound phenomenal. So uh, I'll literally be taking this into the studio on uh, Thursday, two days from now, for those of you looking in the future or in the past, if you've already heard our new record. Um, to start tracking guitars and uh, been there for a few days laying down rhythm tracks and, and tracking leads and and this guitar is going to be part of that so I think I've got specifically two or three leads worked up for a new record with American Jet Set on this guitar and uh, some rhythm parts I want to play on it and uh, it's it's going to be awesome so uh, so check out American Jet Set on the road next year uh, we'll be going from coast to coast we're playing out the Whiskey A Go Go in July and uh, and if you're in the market for a boutique style guitar that, that's just totally unique and original yet playable and pragmatic, uh, Little Crow Guitars is the place to go. So uh, with that, peace out monsters. Peace.